Hello everyone, welcome to Planet Coaster, the beta now. There's a few things I wanted to show you lovely people. Um, for those of you who are not aware or you're running into problems uh, with certain aspects of the game maybe, difficult to say, but let's have a look, what, what's that one? Is that the, that one? No, it's not that one, is it that one? It's that one, there we go. So, what you can do is you, there are various shortcut keys you can use. Now, the square brackets key enable you to increase the size of this here, like this, you see? Move it around. So let's just make it let's just make it large because we can. And don't forget that over here on the right hand side you've got the angle snap and then the angle that you can choose it to and also what the length will be. So let's just make it out to here. So it looks you can right click to go back. So let's get it at least really relatively straight. Like that. Let's build that out of there. Okay, so we press escape and that gets rid of that. So there's our sort of entrance. Now what we need to do also is if we go into park management and we just say that the park is closed. So basically, we don't get anybody coming in. So you say try and can bugger off. So um, let's just make sure that that is still, yeah. Park status is closed. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, random stuff that's helpful to know when you are placing things like shops, facilities, scenery. So let's just say one big rock, okay? So there's your rock. Now, if you hold down the shift key, you can move that rock up and down there like that, you see? And you can see the little marker that shows the center of the rock or the center of where you're gonna place it. So if you wanted to place it literally above here like so you try and find the sort of midpoint of it let's just zoom out a little bit you try your best essentially so put it in the center there and then drop it down and there's your big rock right in the center you see and you can just press z once and it will move it by 90 degrees, you see? Now, what you can do also is you can then press the X key. So let's get this thing, get rid of it with delete. And let's just get a standard little rock, okay? So you press X once. Now these are all the various options that you have for moving things around. So you've got the axis here that you can move up and down. Now let's just pause it. Hopefully it will let us place stuff. So. You can see that's similar to the shift key. You've got this one here and you've got this one here. Now you can press the X again. As soon as you, you don't have to press it, you don't have to do anything or click on that. You just press X again and it gives you the rotation options, you see. So you can rotate it in that axis. You can rotate it in that axis. And you can rotate it in that axis. Now you do have obviously options as to how the world axis is set up. So if you want to use the world axis, then, you know, it will keep that section flat. So you're always going to be flat against the world, so to speak. And you'll give you an idea of what's going on. You can reset the rotation if that's what you want to do. Now, these are kind of important things because, for example, if you want to start placing lights. So we'll go down here to, uh, let's have a look, props and lights. So here is just a standard light, you see? So turn it around, see? Now, if you wanted to put it lower, you could put it lower, obviously. You start putting it under the ground, it's not gonna affect the light, or it's not gonna affect what you want it to. But the point is, is you can rotate them. You can do them in all directions, like so. You see? So these are the things that you can do with moving everything around and what it enables you to do is it enables you to create sort of things a lot easier. Now, what you can do, say, for example, here, you want to make this look a little sexier. Now, you could conceivably put something on top like that and then drop it down so that it just sits there. You see, just above it, bonk. And there you have it.
and that looks like it's part of the ride. Now, if we do ZZ like that, and it changes it 90 to 180 degrees, put this into the center here. There we go, right in the center. If we can get it in there. Let's see, we just got to get it right in there. There we go. It's just starting to clip there. And there you have it. And so two nice sort of skull options there. Now what I tend to do is I will put, hold down shift, there you go, see, look. Um, I will put things on certain entrances so you can see, you know, have an entrance here and then you have it on top just to give it a little bit of extra look, so to speak. Now, when you're placing rides as well, there are various things you can do. So you can see here's a ride, for example. Now, if I hold down the shift button, you can see it can raise up and it will create platforms accordingly for how far you raise it up. You can't raise it down below ground. Now, if you want to press Z, it will do the same thing, but you can hold down the Z key. And you can see here that it's actually going through in increments. And that's this option over here, the angle snap, and then the, you can see there 15 degrees. So each of these little sections, these little green dots indicates a 15 degree. And you can, you can switch that off if you want to. There's probably a shortcut key to do that. But the point is, is that you can find the position that you want to put it. And usually the arrow at the front indicates the front of the ride. So we can say, okay, well, why don't we put the ride there? And then that enables you to plan your ride position and all the rest of it. Now, you've also got the same thing that can apply to coasters. As you can see, you can switch it around, you can move it. Now, one thing to bear in mind is always look to see where that entrance is. So you can see it just in the center of the camera there. You can see essentially the entrance and the exit. So that means if we want to face it that way, we're going to have to have the entrance and the exit in that direction. So, let's see, we can raise it up if we want to. See, look, and it builds that automatically. You can lower it down if you want to. So it could be that it's a sort of more of an underground one or underground situation with respect to the ride. So, let's see, let's move it back down to here and then over to there. So, you can see that it's not as good as we would like it to be. Now, let's just take off the angle snap a second, and there you go, see it's nice and smooth then. And then you can line it up as much as your heart's content. And then, once you've found your, what is your happy position for it, you see, see the platforms automatically get created. And I think about there. Now, obviously if it's red, it can't be necessarily placed there. If it's going to be blue, then it's a lot easier to play, see? And the reason it's going red is because you can see it's just hitting the edge there of the rim of the park. So that'll be the, uh, the edges that won't let you go any further with that. So, there we go. We're right there. And I'd like to leave a little bit of space out here. So let's move that to about... I would say there. And there you have it. You see, so there's your entrance. So you've got your exit there and your entrance there. Now, as a result of that, what you want to do is you can place your entrance down here because they'll run all the way along here and then go into there. So a bit of queuing, bit of all sorts of stuff. And then you can place the exit over here. Now, let's create just a quick path. Carry on the path where we left off. Just leave it like that. So we press escape to cancel that path creation. Now, we've got this particular entrance here and it will say connect the entrance to the path. Now, you can see here that it's actually quite high, but what we want to do is actually lower it. So if you are building and you hold the left shift button and then you click and hold, you can see it actually lowers it like that, you see? Now, we can just 
Lower it like that. Lower it like that. And bingo. There is your entrance. And you can essentially do the same with the exit. Now, it can sometimes just build it very large. So we might just want a nice little exit like that. We might want a slightly wider exit. And the same, the same rule applies. You can hold down the shift, drag it down, and bingo, you're in, you're done. And there is your exit. So you can see, nice entrance, nice exit. Now, this is where you want to consider putting lighting and things of that nature. So you can go into your scenery, you can go into your lighting sections, uh, which is this one here. Now, you can put stuff over the top of it, you can see there. What you would want to do is put it a little bit sort of down there like that. You can see it start to intercept certain areas. So it's just clipping slightly there. And just drop it down a bit. So you could put it in there if that's what you wanted to do. Um, you can have the option, there we go. So you put something like that in there. Just move it in the center. Bring it up. Drop it down, and there it is. And that looks like it's part of the platform. You see? Bring that down, hold the shift key, pop it back up, and bingo. A nice, sexy, lit entrance for you. Now, you can do the same with your exits as well, if that's what you wish. You now, you can hold down the shift key and bury this below the ground, if that's what you want to do. You've got lamp posts that you can then bring up here you can see there's the center point where it's going to be marked so you can say okay i want it to go there bring it down until it intersects with the ground and bingo it goes into position hold the shift key again bring it back up and then slowly pull it back down until it intersects and there you go nice matching lamp posts well almost matching but still pretty good uh you don't have the option to sort of copy heights and things of that nature as of yet but these are the kind of things that you have the option to do. Now, you can see, obviously, all the track rides. You've got transport rides. You've got water rides. You've got all the other various bits and pieces. Now, uh, you can see there we can do angle snap again. Uh, raise that up high. If that's what you want to do, hold down the sh uh, Z key again. You can see us going all the way around in the various angles. And this is the, these are the options you have for creation. So we can bring it down a little bit. There we go, nice down level there like that. Down to the right level. And then fiddle and faff and fart ass around to our heart's content, you see. And this is essentially what you're gonna have the option of doing. Now, the, it applies even more so to the things relating to scenery. So, you know, so for example, you know, you might want to have a nice little Special effect flamethrower in there somewhere. But you might want to hide it a little bit below. And there you go, there's your flamethrower. You see? And it triggered the duration. And it might be a case of that flamethrower will only go off when people go past it. But the point is, is that these are the kind of controls that you have over everything that you design so you can see here and that's obviously it's a bit difficult to see because it's got dark but then we can bring the tree down you know we can move it that way if we want to we can even rotate it if we want to so you could build an entire upside down world if that's what you wanted to do um and in a, in a cliff area or something like that the point is is that Everything is subject to your whim, what you want to do, you name it. Let's get rid of those two strange trees. So that means that, so for example, you want to build sort of like a rocky outcrop here. You could say, okay, let's just move that around like so. And let's turn another one that way. But move it down to here. And put another one there. But move that up slightly and put it there. But the point is, is you can see there that the creative options for what you want to do 
There are so many there to get the effect that you're after. And so say, for example, you that's great. You now you want to put some additional bits and pieces on there. You want to put, uh, you know, topiary on top of it. If you really want to put a piece of topiary on top, that's entirely up to you. The point is, is this is about the design of it all. So there we go. There's a nice little bush there. Because who doesn't want a nice little bush in front of it? So let's go here to props and lighting. And we could, for example, put a light in there. You see? Now, this light is currently under the ground. So let's bring it up here. And let's put that into the world options. There we go. Rotate it around. And bingo. You've got a nice little light in position. You might want to just rotate it around a little bit so it casts a little bit more of a sort of glow like that. Say OK. But the point is that you'll be able to go into these things and change the color. So you can see there the atmosphere on the rocky area. Make it look nasty, foreboding, whatever you want to do. The point is, is that it's entirely up to you what you do, how you design it, how it looks. And all you need is a simple combination of controls on how to do it. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you in the settings. You can go to controls and you can see, obviously, the various options in here. See, mouse controls, object placement controls. Now, this is essentially where you get the information from. So you've got the escape, you can rebind it, you've got rotation, all these controls. See, look, there you go, flattened terrain. Snap toggle, angle snap toggle on and off. How helpful is that? So let's just go in and quickly do something like that. Let's put a rock in. And there you go, you can see now down here, the angle snap switched on and off by the space bar. You see? So, I would advise you to check out the shortcut keys for everything in this game because it will save you a lot of time. It will make it a lot less frustrating for you. You have to click this, click this, click this, all the rest of it, stuff like that. So, I heartily encourage you to check that out. And if you are playing the beta, I hope you are enjoying it. So, hopefully a few of these tips will help you out with your designs i would love to see some of those designs feel free to uh, post a link in the steam channel or something along those lines or um you know send us a pin put a thing on the discussions show me what your creations are because i'd love to see them so anyway a quick thing for you on planet coaster beta and i'll see you next time